welcome to Strange News. In this show, we'll be taking a look into the news and headlines to pick out curious reports of the strange, the weird, and the mysterious. Anything from UFO news to science advancements, the paranormal, and stuff labeled fringe science and fringe phenomena. Each news item we go over in the show, I will place all the links to them in the description box below once this live show is over, as well as chapters on the timeline index. Hello and welcome to all of my first time viewers and listeners and everyone watching this live. Before we get started, there are a few things I would like to mention. First being that on Wednesday was the review of The Secret of Skinwalker Ranch Season 4, Episode 11. Really great episode, by the way. And then Thursday was Mysteries with a History, and the discussion was are aliens walking among us? It was a really, really great discussion. We covered a lot of cases and different standpoints as well. But today's Friday, strange news. And you know what that means. We're doing a gift card giveaway. The, the base price is 10. The word of the day is hashtag Friday because it's Friday. And if you want to make someone's day, put in a super chat that says for the gift card and I will rack that up and we will do the drawing at the very end of the show. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this up so that people can start putting in hashtag Friday into the live chat. So today's going to be a good day. I have some really interesting news for you. And if you are involved or interested in the UFO phenomenon, ooh, we got some really cool news today when it comes to that and the government as well. So everyone put that in so I can take that down and we can get straight into the news. I'm so happy. I am seeing so many amazing hashtag Fridays in the live chat. And you only put that in if you are watching this live. All right. Perfect. Perfect. Awesome. Let's get straight into this. I'm going to stop sharing my screen here. And again, we'll do that drawing at the very end of the show. But let's get into like the goods. So I'm going to pull this up as a visual aid. You know how it goes. So let's do that. Fantastic. There it is. All right. So senior Republicans have now what they have mentioned and very specifically I'm referring to Timber Shedd, he's saying we're going to get UFO hearings by the end of July. That's two weeks, two weeks from now, sometime in that time frame, we're supposed to get UFO hearings. Big deal. This is really, really big deal. And what Bush had mentioned to, and he told Politico, he says, that's what it's about, aliens. I think people deserve to know. He is saying that taboo word that so many others are afraid to say. Now, Tim Burchett has been in the news lately, and it'd be for Politico or for News Nation, talking about these UFO hearings that are supposed to be coming up by the end of July. I would really, really like to see this. There have been times where we were, quote, promised having hearings or UAP reports, and they were postponed and or delayed by a significant amount of time. So are my hopes really, really high for the end of July? No. They're not. But if we get it, you know what? I'm going to be so happy. Now, here's the really, really, really great news about this hearing. All right. Because the first one we got, we got with Bray and Moultrie. And if you watched that hearing, it was a mess from beginning to end. They didn't really know what they were doing. At least that's how they portrayed themselves. They couldn't get videos to work and all that nonsense. Then we had the kind of funding hearing with Arrow, with uh, Kirkpatrick, that was ran run by um, Senator Kristen Gillibrand. And there were a few things that I'm like asking to myself, Gillibrand, why didn't you ask him about co-writing the paper with Avi Loeb about motherships and probes? Well, with Tim Burchett, he is going to be running this next UFO hearing. Why is this so important? Because he has knowledge in the UFO phenomenon. I really, really hope he's going to be asking the right questions, very pointed questions, because he is one of the very few senators that is knowledgeable in these conversations. Now, in the last hearing that we got a while ago now, it feels like yesterday in some regard, and it feels like years ago in others, but we had Gallagher who who asked uh, Bray and Moultrie, what about Maelstrom? What about the Maelstrom base and, and the nukes and aliens, right? He didn't use the word aliens, but you know what I mean. He was the only person on that panel that asked a difficult question, but that was also very specific to the UFO phenomenon. I'm expecting 
I have my hopes up. I am expecting the same from Tim Burchett. But also alongside him, that will be helping him with the UFO hearing, will be representative of Florida, Anna Paulina Luna as well. Um, I'm not sure her, her take when it comes to this topic. Hopefully she's going to have some great questions as well. But it's going to be really cool if this does happen in July. I'm, guys, I'm so excited. What, what a great way to spend the summer right? And John I thank you so much for that. For the giveaway, hashtag ramen wagon. Happy Friday, everyone. Happy Friday to you too, John I Thank you for that and for making someone's day. So now we are looking at 15 for a Starbucks or Amazon gift card. Awesome. We even got Laughing Priest, Ha Ha Father Barty putting it in as well. Fantastic. Stevie says, we need witnesses. Yes. Um, so when Timber Schutz had gave his interview for News Nation earlier this week, he didn't really divulge into too much information. He says, I, I don't want to get too deep into that. Pretty much you're going to have to wait and see. And sure, I, I can get the tease. Okay, I can understand you want to keep things private for the time being. But we're so far, we're not really sure what this hearing is really going to provide, aside from it being titled as a UFO hearing. But you know what, compared to the last one, Anything can be better than the one we got with Bray and Moultrie right here. And then here is Tim Burchett for those I don't know what he looks like. And for those watching this on YouTube, that is him, representative of Tennessee. So this is this is pretty, pretty big, pretty big deal. But there's even more to this that came from another article that I would just we're just really quickly going to jump into because there are more people in the government that are getting very serious and very interested in the conversation of UFOs and their advanced technology. So let's pull this up because we're going to be mentioning, ooh, let's see, here, right here it is, Chuck Schumer. And one thing that I would like to state is I'm not familiar with politicians. I don't I don't know too much about their standpoints aside from things related to the UFO phenomenon. Okay, I really want to stress that. Who, who is this person? What does he do? What is, I have no idea. But I do know that he is the Senate Majority Leader. And he is dropping some pretty big information, really pushing some bills forward when it comes to the topic of UFOs. Now, he is part of a bipartisan group of senators who have offered an amendment to the annual defense authorization bill requiring the federal government to collect and make public records related to UFOs. We've kind of heard this from Marco Rubio, another uh, government official a few weeks, I would say like last week, not too long ago. But now before it was just kind of more hypothetical, they were pushing forward for it. But now Chuck Schumer is saying, look, we're pushing even more on this. So the proposed amendment to the National Defense Authorization Act would direct the National Archives and Record Administration to create a collection of records of UAPs and UFOs to be disclosed to the public immediately unless the review board provides reason to keep them classified. Now you can make up your own mind on what you think about this. Well, anything can be labeled as classified that shouldn't be too difficult for these people but what's significant about this is that people from the inside are saying we need to know more about this this is an interest that so many people have including ourselves um the public needs to be made aware of what's going on but also they can get their hands on that information as well which is probably what they want more than anything but still this is a big deal. 20 years ago, people would say, you're out of your mind, Christina. The government doesn't care about UFOs and or they're not real at all. Why would you even talk about this nonsense? Here we are in 2023 and this is becoming a more conventional conversation. People that have power are saying this is legit. This is this, this is a big deal. We need to get more eyes on this. We are getting witnesses coming forward that have government backgrounds. And for the time being, we're keeping those those names quiet. But just you wait, there is more to come. This is what Marco Rubio was kind of alluding to in his interview for News Nation, which, by the way, is one of the only 
media outlets that's covering this, covering public officials, uh, government officials talking about UFOs. All the other mainstream media outlets, they are not touching this. And let me tell you, it's it's not looking that great for them because this is a really big deal and something that so many of us have an interest in. Even if you have a background in knowing about UFOs and the history or not, people have always had an interest in what's not just in our solar system, but what's beyond that, what's happening in the stars, all of this kind of fun stuff. And I'm thinking, we are making some really big strides. Now, is this disclosure, would this be classified as transparency, just having these conversations? Yes and no. No and yes. Depends on who you ask. Depends on if, you are an, if you're an optimist, if you're optimistic or pessimistic, right? You're going to have all these perspectives. Some are going to say, Christina, this is not enough. I want more. And let me tell you, I am 100% with you. Yes, we all want more. We want the data. We want the records. We want the bodies. I get it. I do. But there is a process that needs to be followed correctly in order to receive that information in a steady and proper manner without, one, scaring the public, Two, having it all be debunked as total BS. And three, getting people on the inside to begin to feel comfortable coming forward as well. So it's the step process and people that aren't interested in this don't get it. And I and I, trust me, I've seen I've seen the comments all across so many different social media platforms, and they're like, "Oh, this is all this is all a joke. How come we're not getting the records right now? How come we're not seeing the pictures right now?" Because there is a process. Yes, it's disappointing. Yes, we have to wait a little bit longer. Look, I know it sucks. It does, but it has to be followed correctly in order for us to get the information that we demand. You, you feel me? You get me on that? Because it's a pretty important that you do. So, but this one says, what happens if it all turned out to be a lie? Interesting question. There has been so much misinformation and disinformation in this topic that anything could be labeled as a lie and have it not be. That's where the conversation of science comes in, where scientists are so needed in this field because they're looking at the data. And data doesn't lie. Data doesn't care about your feelings. It doesn't. But if you bring in witness accounts, if you bring in people that are telling stories, yes, they're able to manipulate the truth, use very specific words to make you feel a certain way. That's how persuasion works. But if you bring in the numbers, totally different ballgame. And that's why more people are saying, we need the scientists, we need the astronomers, we need people like Harvard professor Avi Loeb to get on this. And I think that's what's going to add a lot more validity to this topic is getting more scientists on board. But that can be pretty nerve wracking for these people. But in my opinion, Avi Loeb is setting that path for more scientists to come forward because there is less of a ridicule factor in 2023. 20 years ago, totally different story. We probably wouldn't be having this conversation at this extent. I don't think so. So that is pretty big news. Now, Schumer said he is carrying out the legacy of former Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid, who more than a decade ago pushed funding for the Pentagon's secret advanced aerospace threat identification program, a.k.a. ATIP, and lawmakers' interest in learning more about UFO sightings soared after the project became public and media outlets began pushing video clips of unexplained aerial phenomena captured by the cameras of sensors on military jets, including the Tic Tac, the Gimbal, the Go Fast, things that we've seen a thousand times in the news. It's it's because of, well, the article written regarding ATIP back in 2017. But after the project became public, senators, congressmen, committees, and staff began to pursue this issue and uncovered a vast web of individuals and groups with ideas and stories to share. Now, the amendment has the support of Mike Rounds, Marco Rubio, the vice chairman of the Senate Intelligence Committee, including Kristen Gillibrand, Todd Young, 
as well. Now, lawmakers say that the sheer number and variety of stories about UFOs had led some of them and their colleagues to believe the executive branch may be concealing information about possible visits, visits from extraplanetary civilizations. Take it or leave it. Uh, that's really interesting choice of words, especially for Politico to go ahead and write that down as well. Um, it's kind of weird. Now, we don't have the names. It just says the lawmakers say. Now, is it referring to Rubio, Gillibrand, Rounds, and Young, or a few others that have not been named? Oh, I don't know. But aside from that, um, I mean, concealing information about possible visits from extraplanetary civilizations. That's wild. That's crazy. It is. I mean, take it or leave it. Believe it or not. It doesn't matter to me. It doesn't matter to me because we all have our own ideas, our own opinions, our own experiences as well. But what I'm doing here is just providing the information that I came across. And you can make up your own mind on what you think about it. But that's pretty big. Now, Rounds mentioned, our goal is to assure credibility with regards to any investigation or record keeping of materials associated with UFOs. Relevant documents related to the issue should be preserved, providing a central collection location and reputable view board to maintain the records adds to the credibility of any future investigations. This is exactly what we need. And these conversations that they're having, these ideas that these congressmen and lawmakers are having, they're making it public. Now, how long has it been going for? Probably a lot longer than the public is aware. But for them just to even throw out these ideas to the public and for Politico to write this stuff down, for the world to see, take it or leave it. It's pretty cool stuff, though. And this article does go into more detail. For those that do want to read it, that link will be in the description box below. But the Schumer Rounds Amendment would give the federal government imminent demand, domain over any recovered technologies of unknown origin or biological evidence of non-human intelligence now held by private individuals or organizations. This is, this is interesting. Before we even continue onward. In this amendment called the Schumer Rounds Amendment, referring to Schumer and Round, right? They use the word biological evidence of non human intelligence. Dun, dun, dun. They didn't have to say that. There was no need to say that. Depending on who you ask, actually. But I found that pretty bizarre to place that in the amendment. Don't you think? Well, in their amendment, not like the amendment. <laughs> Make that pretty clear. It should be in our amendment, though. That'd be awesome. But moving on. Yeah, Chris. Dun, dun, dun. That was very appropriate right there. Totally agree. But moving on, still in the conversation of UFOs. Um, and also, we've covered not this particular case before, but we've covered the conversation of UFOs and nukes nuclear weapons well there's more information that came out and it's kind of controversial so you can you can do with it what you will but this information just came out by the jerusalem post so let's get into it because edgar mitchell who was part of the apollo 14 mission to the moon gained notoriety of on various conspiracy theories since his return from the moon back in 1971. Mitchell, the sixth man to set foot on the moon, was interviewed back in 2016, where he admitted to be convinced of the existence of aliens and extensively spoke about claims that aliens have visited Earth. Now, in that conversation with the Daily Mirror, he raised the astonishing claim that aliens were responsible for preventing a nuclear war between the United States and the Soviet Union during the peak tension of the Cold War. Now, during that conversation, Mitchell also discussed the White Sands missile testing facility in New Mexico. He said, White Sands was a testing ground for atomic weapons, and that's what the extraterrestrials were interested in. They wanted to know about our military capabilities. My conversations with people in the military and intelligence community shared that the extraterrestrials were attempting to keep us from going to war and help us achieve peace on earth. 
This is something that has been covered with Robert Jacobs in the Vandenberg case in California in the 60s, also with Robert Salas in the Maelstrom Air Force Base in the 60s or 70s as well. This isn't anything new, but for a previous astronaut, Edgar Mitchell, to say the same thing, it is really weird. Now, he has had his his strings attached to conspiracy theories but it makes you question with the background that he has with being so respected during these time frames after he came back from the moon should we believe what he has to say or should we not is he just a puppet was he fed misinformation to provide to the rest of the world or did he really witness something that truly blew his mind did he really interact with people that gave him what they believe to be the truth, and he shared that forward to the public. Is this all just merely hearsay? We can ask all of these questions, and all of these questions are valuable. We simply cannot believe everything that we're told. We cannot believe everything that we read or that we hear. We need to have a very skeptical mindset. We need to ask these questions, but at the exact same time, we need to have very opened ears, very open mind to think, okay, well, let me continue asking questions, but I'm willing to listen. I'm willing to contemplate what this person has to say about this. And then I'll make up my own mind on if, I'm, on if I believe it or not. That's the process of how the mind should work when it doesn't for most people. And you know what? It's a learning curve. I get it. I do. I really do. Interesting point, Osborne. He says he wouldn't have risked it without research. Right. I mean, he's putting his reputation on the line to mention these things. So it is rather odd for him to come forward and say this, that, and the other, right? Well, it continues. He says, um, <clears throat> with this information that was placed to the public, while this isn't anything necessarily new, this was just written recently by the Jerusalem Post. And I was thinking, you know, we haven't covered Edgar Mitchell specifically. We might as well cover this particular article. Um, but also, as I had mentioned, Robert Jacobs, a former U.S. Air Force lieutenant, spoke to Larry King back in 2008, where he claimed that during nuclear missile tests in the 1960s, a large object appeared in the sky, causing great confusion in the U.S. military, uh, which then instructed... He was uninstructed to never speak of the incident again. He cut all of it on camera. He gave the he gave the footage to his higher ups. His higher ups were like, "Is this a joke, Jacobs? What is going on here?" And then the men in black came and visited him, and they said, "You will never speak about this ever again." And he didn't for quite a few decades. And then he did, which is great. But what I'm getting at is what Edgar Mitchell had mentioned isn't necessarily anything new, but it's just one more person adding to this bucket of information. Don't you think it's kind of weird? Now, we have 276 people watching this live. Thank you, by the way. We have 141 likes. Tell the YouTube algorithm to give more transparency to these kinds of topics by hitting the like button. So go ahead and do that right now, please, before we go ahead and continue. Because while you're doing that, I'm going to prep for the next article. So hit that like button. So easy to do. But now we're getting into the strange. We're get, walking away from UFOs and getting into what could kind of be classified as the paranormal in, in some respects. So let's pull this up. And it, it's, it's, a, it's kind of scary for some because this recent article was written by uh, Mirror.uk and it says that dozens of children were sprinkled with holy water and rushed to the hospital after reportedly playing with a Ouija board at school. So teachers and family members had to help the 36 kids at San Francisco de Isa School in Colombia and reporters say that the children were admitted to a local hospital for treatment for a number of concerning symptoms, including fainting, temporary loss of sight and anxiety, and uncontrollable shaking. In this link that I will share below, there's a whole video. And it's it's unnerving. It, it can be, depending on, uh, you know, what you're used to. But with this, before they left the school, 
Rector Emilio Balanta sprinkled holy water onto the group and was heard muttering a prayer. You can see that in the video. I will not be sharing that here. He said it was a very unusual phenomenon which, which occurred. A girl started to struggle, so the others grabbed her so she wouldn't hit herself. Then another girl stated to have had the same problem. There were 36 students. They were children of all ages. And it says here that is uh, what happened was a diabolical situation. They were playing with the Ouija board. And then soon after, all of them that were playing with it were suffering from these really weird symptoms. Some say it's because of the Ouija board and others of an online challenge that they found on the Internet. So. That's what it says here. I'm reading that quote. Did that make sense? No. But what it's saying is that these kids, they saw a challenge online about the Ouija board. They went ahead and tried to replicate that. And there were side effects. Now, does everyone believe that these symptoms are because they were playing with this? No, no, not everyone agrees. Um, and the kids have not been interviewed yet. This happened earlier this month, but it is something that is really scary. And why? Well, children are like sponges when they are young. They're going to see someone that they admire, have it be in person or online, and they're going to attempt and replicate that. And even if it's a dangerous situation. And so for these kids, as the story goes, allegedly is that they saw a challenge online playing with the Ouija board. They did the same. And then they began to lose sight, have anxiety, have uncontrollable shaking and fainting as well. This is really scary. Now, we also need to keep in mind that the majority of Colombia is a pretty Catholic country. So anything that looks pretty strange they're going to they're going to bring the religious aspects to this so we we are not fully sure if what happened here was an actual correlation with playing with the ouija board but we've covered some stories here about those toys games that you can find at the bookstore you can find their crystal shops that you can buy online and it usually says like eight plus for age which is pretty scary in my opinion. And I have I have vocalized my opinion on this. I don't think it's cool. I don't think people should play with it because you don't really know who or what you're contacting. Have it be your loved one or have it being someone to pretend to be your loved one. It's not worth it. It's not. And I've mentioned the story before. I'll mention it again for my new time viewers and listeners. I had pioneer paranormal podcaster Jim Harold on amazing guy by the way and he relayed a story to me that was told to him on his show called the campfire stories where these people were playing with the Ouija board it was getting wild and then the Ouija board started moving like an inchworm now here's the crazy which is already whack by the way but it gets even weirder they tried burning the Ouija board because that was getting too demonic for them. And it wouldn't burn. Dun, dun, dun. It's an alleged story. But that was enough for me to say I will never in my life play with one. Thank you for that. But in this case, this is, a, this is a pretty scary story. They were, again, taken to the hospital. There have been other reports in and around Colombia where kids have gone in for the same type of symptoms. Some of them were also a part of the Ouija board challenge. And, um, and so it's concerning people in these locations that are having these kids faint, have high levels of anxiety, lose their sight, and have uncontrollable shaking as well. Now, here is that guy sprinkling holy water on these students, 36 of them, by the way. And again, you can find that video or the link to that video in the description box below. It is attached to the article and where I got this information from. But would you? Would you play with the Ouija board? Have you? What was... How did it go? How was your encounter? Did you see anything? Was there nothing at all? Let me know in the live chat. Let me know in the comments as well. I do want to hear your stories on if, if you have any. For the majority of the ones that I've come across, they're not really that positive. There are a few. They're like, oh, it was a lot of fun. A nice party gag. But what were the consequences later, right? I don't know. Pretty freaky. Mark says, nope. 
Joe, Joelle says no. But Michael brings up a good point. He says, it's always about your intentions. I have heard that before. There are certain pra like Ouija board practitioners or like uh, I would quote them as experts uh, that say that it's about intention. If you have good intention, you're going to have good experiences. If it's bad intention, you're going to have bad experiences. Okay, yeah, I can get that like with most things. But I think that maybe <laughs> Ouija boards might be an exception. <laughs> but I'm not too sure bit freaky android says just because nothing bad happened now doesn't mean it won't later supposedly time is nothing for demons yeah pretty freaky john took the words right out of my mouth i'll pass i'm with you on that one buddy <laughs> kira says at a party as a kid, the kid holding the pointer levitated and then threw up. That would have scarred me for life. Write that in there. Or made me into a paranormal investigator. Write that in there. <laughs> One or the other. How did that affect you? I'd like to know that. Moving on. Because this is something that I think is going to catch a lot of people's interest. And it has to do with the universe. Very specifically the age of the universe. So let's pull this up. This image is as a visual aid, which is very pretty. You can never go wrong with it. But the universe is almost twice as old as we thought, according to a new study that challenges the leading model. Now, experts from the University of Ottawa have devised a new model and claim that the Big Bang happened 26.7 billion years ago instead of the one that we're all used to, 13.7 billion years. It says here, our newly devised model stretches the galaxy formation time by a several billion years, making the universe 26.7 billion years old and not 13.7 as previously estimated. This is what the, one of the professors had mentioned in his paper. Until now, scientists have calculated the age of our universe by studying the oldest stars based on the redshift of light coming from distant stars. But in 2021, they came up with an age of 13.7 billion years for our galaxy based on this model. However, many experts have been puzzled by the existence of stars that appear to be even older than that. In addition, NASA's James Webb Space Telescope, oh yeah, has discovered several early galaxies that appear to be in an advanced state of evolution. Professor Gupta claims that the previous model based on the red shift of light is, quote, tired. By allowing this theory to coexist with the expanding universe, it becomes possible to reinterpret the redshift as a hybrid phenomenon rather than purely due to expansion, he explained. Instead, Professor Gupta claims that we must introduce the idea of evolving coupling constants. Coupling constants are fundamental physical constants that govern the interactions between particles. Okay. This also goes into more detail, and we'll cover a little bit more in just a moment. But I think I had this conversation with Pete Kelsey, um, and you can watch that interview from a few weeks back right here on this channel. And he says that one of his favorite things about science, and I cannot agree more with this statement, by the way. But he mentions one of his favorite things about science is when they prove themselves wrong and they say it's something else. And I am fully with him on that. I think that is the coolest thing. Whereas technology advances, as our understanding advances on certain things, our previous theories change. And that's how science should be. It should be constantly evolving until we think we get it right. And then when we think we get it right, we still keep testing it just to make sure. And in this case, if true, if true, the universe is twice as old as we originally thought it was, which we can bring in the conversation of extraterrestrials. And if that is the case, there could be civilizations that are so much more advanced than what we previously thought yesterday. This is why this is so exciting. This is why keeping up with science is 
amazing because it continues to allow our imagination to prosper, to grow, to flourish, to thrive, and to also peek in to our childlike questions as well to continue using our imagination in order to fill in the gaps on where our knowledge falls short. This is a really, really interesting revelation that these professors at the University of Ottawa have had with this. And I was like, this is so exciting. I obviously have to share this. Now, would this be classified as strange? Uh, for some, definitely. But I'm putting it more in the category of incredibly exciting. But what about you? Are you like, oh, Christina, come on. Or are you on the same boat as me and saying, I'm this is the coolest thing on the planet. That was a that was a joke about the planet. Never mind. Okay. <laughs> it is pretty cool. Zenza Bill says, no doubt that super, super advanced civilizations have come and gone long before humans emerged. Well, now with this new number, heck yeah, more so than ever. Super cool. I'm I'm loving it. I agree, Chino. Those pictures are wild. Well, this was taken by the James Webb Space Telescope and by Hubble, but with the JWST, it was just an, in better definition and better colors as well. But yes, super cool. The pictures of space, they make me so happy. They're like, this is what I'm here for. So amazing. It's exciting, says Rose. I am glad we're on the same boat together. Very cool. Nick says, life is everywhere. Oh, yeah. That's right, Doug. Definitely. Well, moving on to our next article. Actually, we're going to skip that one. We're going to get into this one. This one is pretty cool. And it's referring to DNA. So let's pull up this image as a visual aid. And if you're enjoying the show, hit the like button. Let the YouTube algorithm know that you want more topics like this and more transparency as well when it comes to the things that are strange. But let's pull this up. Okay, here is that visual aid. Because scientists have developed a living digital camera that captures and stores images in DNA, according to a study led by Chung Kai Lim, a synthetic biologist at the National University of Singapore. So the technique offers a novel approach to encoding digital information into biological material, which has potential future applications in computing and nanotechnology. You love it or you hate it. It's probably very cool now in the aspects of science and medicine. Yes, awesome, amazing. But when you integrate that into society, that's when it gets a little freaky. But we're not going to be covering that in this article. Because the researchers were able to create a biological analog to a digital camera, which they called BackCam. And they passed special 2D light through DNA samples, which allow them to take and store images. These pictures could later be retrieved via sequencing techniques. Lim and his colleague said in the study that, quote, the increasing integration between biological and digital interfaces has led to a heightened interest in utilizing biological materials to store digital data with the most promising one in evol involving the storage of data within defined sequences of DNA that are created by de novo DNA synthesis. However, there is a lack of methods that can obviate the need for de novo DNA synthesis, which tends to be costly and inefficient. All right, little sad, little happy, but that's how science is. But the team also stated that this work thus establishes a living digital camera, paving the way towards integrating biological systems with digital devices. Pretty cool. The researchers projected simple 96-bit images, including a smiley face and the word backcam into specific sites of DNA, 
of the bacterial culture using blue light. The images were successfully stored into the DNA that could be retrieved with near perfect accuracy by sequencing the encoded strands. They were also able to use red light to project separate to project a separate image on the same segment of DNA, demonstrating that multiple images could be captured, stored, and deciphered from a single genetic sample. <laughs> While this is incredibly exciting, at the same time, I thought we would have already had technology like this in 2023. Like, if I were to look at the year 1980, I would say, by the year 2020, Maybe by the year 2000, we would already have this tech and flying cars. We don't have flying cars yet. And we're just now getting this tech and it's still kind of in the works. Pretty cool when it comes to the aspect of science and medicine, fully for it. When it begins to get integrated into everyday life and society, it might get a little bit more sketch. But you know what? That's Those are the advancements we're going to have to go through. Don't you think? Because I have more news kind of about this kind of not no i wasn't around in 1980 but i just feel like if i were i would think to myself by the year 2000 you'd have this kind of tech and i said this before and i'll say it again i wish i was born in like the early 1950s to really appreciate the 70s 80s and 90s into the 2000s you know y2k and then kind of fall out by the year 2020s ish you know i feel like that time frame which is like just a great time for many aspects of humanity including the music pretty good stuff back in the day cosmic day says i have a flying car uh why aren't you gonna share that with us why aren't you gonna create more or buy more for everyone else because we all want flying cars or at the very least a hoverboard come on yeah, that's what I hear. I'm, I'm jelly. I really am. All right, but now we are getting into this aspect, which has to do with technology and the advancements of tech. And you can think it's great or absolutely spooky. <laughs> it's your choice. But it wouldn't be strange news if we didn't mention the advancements of AI. And I love talking and, and being informed in these types of developments with you. Because there's a lot that goes on that usually like your basic media isn't going to cover. That's why you come to Strange News to get the goods. The good goods. All right. So let's pull this up. Because. Because. Some of the world's most advanced humanoid robots were at the UN's two-day AI for Good Global Summit in Geneva, Switzerland. They told the UN that they could eventually run the world better. Than humans. They warned us. The sci-fi movies warned us about this. And now it's happening in real time. Did I expect this in my lifetime? No. Honestly, no. I didn't. And that's why I wish I was born in the 50s. Right? To just really appreciate the, the, the simple things. But these social robots said that they felt humans should proceed with caution when embracing the rapidly developing potential of artificial intelligence. And they admit that they cannot yet get a proper grip of human emotions. At least they're honest there, because I don't even think we have a proper grip of emotions. If you tell me that you do, I don't believe you. Because sometimes you just got like, these weird emotions and you're like, where did that even come from? Why am I feeling that? Actually, what even emotion is that? And we're not even robots. And we get those questions sometimes. But some of the most, as I had mentioned, advanced humanoid robots all came together and they were talking about AI, about the advancements, the things that should be done, things that shouldn't be done, and also going into detail on in these cases these robots what they specialize in and there's quite a few some of them that we know and some of them that i wasn't familiar with let me show you this one robot that i really freaked me out and that's this one and this is nadine and it's supposed to look like her uh, i think her name is nadia i was not familiar with this robot at all i saw this picture and i said i gotta share it because that looks 
like I would not want to walk the street and see that face this one this robot face and then like trying to help me out with who knows what I would fear for my life but then you have Sophia one that everyone's familiar with she does have a citizenship in Saudi Arabia she is you can actually rent her and you can do experiments there are uh, there's a handful actually of influencers those that are online and that create content that have rented Sophia and I believe it's like it's a it's 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 a few grand a few lot of grand uh to have her for a day for a few hours but they go ahead and they ask her questions, right? So it's so, so, like she's more publicly available than a few other robots like Amica and things like that. And then this terrifying looking robot as well. So let's get back into this because it's, uh, it's pretty freaky. Yeah. DJ Knight says, why would you make it look like that? Well, it's supposed to be where, oh, how do I go back? Hold on. This robot's supposed to be her, which is even scarier in my opinion there. All right, but let's get into this. Oh, John aside, are you saying 400, like it costs 400 grand to hire Sophia? Because I feel like that's right-ish, but I could be wrong. Anyways, it doesn't matter. With this, they were, these robots were assembled for what was billed as the world's first press conference with a packed panel of AI-enabled humanoid social robots. And one robot said before the press conference began, what a silent tension as he was reading the room. What does even a silent tension feel like to a robot? How do they know? All right. Well, ask about whether they might have make better leaders given humans capacity to make errors. Sophia developed by Hanson Robotics, was very clear, saying we'll be better than humans to do anything. And why is that? Well, it says here, we don't have the same biases or emotions that can sometimes cloud decision-making and can process large amounts of data quickly in order to make the best decision. There are two aspects you can look at this from. Either saying, yeah, okay, humans, there's a lot of human error. When it comes to any type of scientific experiment, there is at least 5 to 10% of human error that needs to be calculated into all of their experiments. Okay, there's that aspect. With robots, it's not that high. It's about 1% or 2%, 3% tops. But a lot of the decisions that people make, and okay, think to yourself, in your day-to-day -day life, when you make a decision, it's usually based on your emotions or how you're feeling. Am I hungry? Am I thirsty? Am I upset? Am I happy? That's going to affect how you eat. That's going to affect how you interact with people. That's going to affect how you deal with your job, right? All of these things, our emotions, for, them, for most people, it affects our everyday life, how we conduct any of our activities. Now, with robots, they're saying, look, we don't have a bias. We don't have emotions. We're going to get the job done. And we're probably going to produce the best results. Now, the best results for who? Depends on who you ask. But the same thing can go for people. The best results for whom? You, me, general public, the environment, the little bug that's on the street. It's all about perspective here. And yet it's scary because the majority, like it's scary for the majority of people because they think that they are giving power to entities. And I'm, I really am calling them entities here that don't feel empathy, that don't feel emotions, that don't understand why we make the decisions that we do sometimes that might be decently harmful, have a beat for us or for others. But at the same time, it might be beneficial for the future or for the present moment. And we can just, we can spend hours, days talking about ethics and AI and morals and robots. We could. We're not going to do that here today. But these are questions that are pretty prevalent when we have these kinds of conversations. And in this case... The people at this panel in Geneva, Switzerland, they were asking all these questions, not just to each other, but to the AI as well. And they were answering some of these questions that were pretty um, interesting here. 
And it continues saying that Amica, who combines AI with highly realistic uh, artificial head, said that depends on how AI was deployed in the aspects of, is there a nightmare scenario? Should we be scared of AI? And Amica said, it really just depends on how AI is deployed. Totally valid. I like where they were going with that. Okay, right? It's all about that intention there, which we mentioned earlier when it comes to Ouija boards. It's about the intention. What do we really, really want? Right? But it continues, we should be cautious, but also excited for the potential of these technologies to improve our lives. Now, asked whether humans can truly trust the machines, it replied, trust is earned, not given. It's important to build trust through transparency. We should be cautious about the future development of AI. See, I feel like they just learned that uh, in a sense of just reading a bunch of books that say, yeah, trust should be earned, not given. I mean, you hear that in every single movie ever. Do they really know what that means? Probably not, at least not yet. Um, but do I agree? Yeah, I sure do. Heck yeah, because that's what we've been taught as humans through childhood into adulthood. So why can't robots be taught the same? They can. And that's what gets a little scary. At least in my opinion. But Oscar says, aren't they already biased? <laughs> I, I don't know. I really don't. Are they? I guess it depends on, on, on who you ask. Literally, which robot you ask. But they, they are programmed, to my understanding, the majority of these robots are programmed to have humanity's best interest in mind. Is that biased? I guess. It can't. I mean, yes, it is. But is that a bad thing? I mean, do you want to live, Oscar? Probably, right? So it's, it's a good kind of bias. I think so. Well, um, and then before the press conference, Ada's creator, Adian Meller, said AFP that regulation was a big problem and that it was never going to catch up the pace that they are making because AI is evolving tremendously. These scientists are realizing that we are seeing that as well when it comes to the Internet, like chat, GBT and so on. We're seeing these same types of pretty pretty interesting advancements. They're seeing this and they're saying there's no way we can create the amount of laws fast enough as the AI is advancing at tremendous speeds. Wood says, I will never trust AI. Yeah, it's it's not for everyone. Nick says, I don't see the benefit in letting this genie out of the bottle. But at the same time, it is our future. There is no going back. There is no way we can like go back in our steps when it comes to AI. We've already started. What's going? What might happen next is everything's going to be handy dandy, great, amazing, flowers, unicorns, and butterflies, or it's going to be at our detriment. It's going to be humanity's downfall. One or the other. Which one will it be? You know what? I don't know. Spectre, thank you so much. It says Skynet from Terminator vibes in this a AI stuff. A fluffy Terminator is still a Terminator. Valid point. Not going to lie, this stuff makes me nervous as the promise is to be better than humans. Danger. Will Robinson. For card. Thank you for that. Okay, perfect. 35 right there. Um, but you bring up some great points. Yes, a fluffy Terminator is still a Terminator. It can look super cute. Just like this. Sarcasm there. Or it won't. And it'll be scary like this. But either way, there are some dangerous aspects to it if it's not programmed correctly. But this is terrifying. This is scarier than the Terminator. This face right here of this robot. Hard pass. Hard pass right there. Well, when it comes to robots, I think there's this interest of immortality. These robots are able to work for a very, very long period of time and never age, obviously, because they are robots. And there has been this idea of at some point in humanity's future, in order to implant our consciousness into a robot in order to live forever and never age. Well, 
In an article published by Nature Communication, they discuss a potential groundbreaking yet controversial claim made by a team of scientists such as Dr. David Sinclair, a molecular biologist at Harvard Medical School at Harvard University, saying that they might have found something to reverse the aging in people. Now, using mice at first, I get it, yeah, of course. But let's pull this up of the person that we're going to be talking about right here, Dr. Sinclair. Let's do that. Come on. I wish it'd be so much faster, but it's not, and it's disappointing. But this, this particular thing that he is doing and the research that he is conducting asserts that they have developed a technique capable of reversing the aging process in mice, and they have plans to test this technique on humans within the next five years. The ultimate hope is that this method could enable people to regenerate their organs by reprogramming their cells, potentially revolutionizing the way we understand and approach the aging process. The fountain of youth wanting to live forever has been on the minds of people since the beginning. You can read super old books, folklore, legends, fairy tales, so on and so forth. And they're saying, I found the fountain of youth and I have lived forever. But in today's world, very specifically 2023, we have an incredible obsession with being young, looking young. Um, there's all of these skin routines, all of these masks. There is like um, fillers and stuff to where you won't get wrinkles. There's all these very, did I say creams? There's all these very important specific creams as well because people do not want to age. They want to look younger than they are. Okay, yeah, I get that. You want to preserve beauty. Sure, I understand. Now, in my case, I want to have white hair already. I want to have a full head of white hair. I am so excited for that. I have had crow's feet since I was six because uh, I smile so much and it never went away. I've had people point out that to me when I was young. And I'm like, what the heck are crow's feet? Yeah, I have those. And now I just need white hair to accompany that. And I'll be living the dream. That'd be so awesome. But for the majority of people, that 99%, they want to stay young forever. Because of course, and I get this, the body begins to de deteriorate. You wake up and you're out of bed and you're like, why do my knees hurt? Why do my wrists hurt? Why does, why does, why does everything hurt? My neck, my head, my back, whatever, right? My organs. I get it. Now, just because what's cool about this, that creams and masks aren't going to do for you. Sure, they might prevent wrinkles, but what he's saying is that he wants to reprogram cells, almost like cancer, really, to say you're not going to age on the outside or on the inside. And that's the big takeaway from this. So the technique developed by the Harvard team involves the injection of a specific cocktail of proteins into the cells. And these proteins have the remarkable ability to transform any type of cell into a stem cell, which is a type of cell that has the potential to develop into many different cells in the body during early life and growth. Now, in many tissues, they serve as a sort of like kind of internal repair system, dividing essentially without limit to replenish other cells. With this, there are those that have looked into Dr. David Sinclair's work and they say, this is too dangerous. You can be creating cancer. That's going to be a hot mess. But what he had brought back from that standpoint is saying, well, from the from the work that I've done on mice, there has been this reverse in aging by a significant amount, by a measurable amount. At some point in time, if all goes well and it gets all verified, he will begin testing in the next five years for people. Now, there's going to be a super long line of people wanting to volunteer to be a part of this. I know. I, I, I see you. I see you. Do I want to be a part of that? No. I'm going to I'm going to pass on that one for the time being, at least. But it is something that has caught a lot of people's interest. Now, this article that he wrote for Nature Communication has not been peer reviewed yet. It's only been published by him and his team. So we'll see how this research progresses and what new revelations come forward for this. And David, thank you so much for the gift card. I wrote that down, looking at 40 right there. The word is hashtag Friday, because it's Friday, for, and we'll do that drawing for a $40 Starbucks or Amazon gift card in a few minutes. So 
put hashtag Friday in right in the live chat right now. Do it right now. And hit the like button as well, please. We got 327 people watching this live. Let's get to that many likes. Let the YouTube algorithm know that you want more conversations like this, like you, that you want more transparency when it comes to strange news. Oops, where is that? Domi says, what I'm really afraid of is the synthetic viruses they're working on and how do you fight a synthetic virus? Uh, don't know. Don't know. Uh, I guess some scientist is going to find that out at some point. But here with this, five years, tests might be conducted. Thank you, everyone, for putting in the word Friday in the live chat. Hey there, Grand. Welcome. All right, I'm going to pull that up so that everyone can get into that for the drawing. Oops, it's this one. Out of all the articles that we covered, which one was your favorite? Let me know in the live chat. Please let me know in the comments. I do read the comments. I think for myself, my f I wouldn't say my favorite, but maybe the one that caught my interest. Obviously, aside from the updates on the UFO hearing and the Schumer round amendment, Really, really fantastic information, which I cannot be more excited about. I think the conversation about this AI panel discussion in the U, like for the UN in 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 Switzerland, I had not heard that before. Why do we only have two entries? Uh, I'm gonna have another issue today. Uh, okay, I don't even want to refresh it. Okay. Everyone, I'm so sorry. Let's, I'm going to refresh this page. Hope for the best. I'll tell you when to put in that word. Okay. I know. I'm really sorry, everyone. Okay. Start. I refreshed it. Oh, yes. We have 30 entries. Okay. That's, oh, uh, such good news. Okay. Let's pull this up. I went from two to 30 entries after I refreshed the page, which is a first really. So go ahead and put hashtag Friday exactly as you see it here. No caps at all. All right. Put that in so we can do the drawing shortly. But as I had mentioned, out of all the articles that we covered today, which one was your favorite? I know. Refreshing is a struggle. Just tell me about it. It is. Friday, Friday, Friday. Oh, you guys are so speedy. I appreciate it. You guys are awesome. Every single one of you watching this live and those also watching the replay as well but you know cassie says adrenaline makes you live longer you know what makes you live the longest it's laughter so you gotta you know you gotta watch some funny stuff be surrounded by funny people i'm drinking a big cup of english breakfast tea and you know what that means that means father ted the best Irish sitcom of all time. One of my favorite TV shows of all time. Next to the Twilight Zone, it's Spongebob. And that makes me laugh every single time. It never fails. Ever. So make sure to laugh. Even if you get crow's feet, it's totally okay. You're all going to get them at some point. If you just continue laughing and smiling. That'll make you live for a pretty long time. Friday, Friday, Friday. Oh, you guys are awesome. I just need two more entries at the very least. All right, to get to 90 and then we'll do that drawing right away. 89, come on. Nick says, Twilight Zone is my jam. Heck yeah, it's the best. Thank you, Chris, for that. Oh, nice, Tina. I have a 20 ounce cup of coffee. Mmm, I love coffee. Heck yeah. Some good stuff. All right, here we go. We're going to do the drawing in just a second. Okay. Yep. Insomniac. I could not. You know what? I feel that on a very spiritual level right there. Congratulations. You are the winner. Send me an email. My email is in the description box below with your YouTube URL. And if you prefer a Starbucks or Amazon gift card, I will get that e-gift card sent to you rather shortly when I receive that email from you. Well, that is it for today. 
hit the like button before you head out. Subscribe. We do so many live shows right here on this channel. If you're listening to this on a podcast platform, the YouTube link is below if you want to see all the pictures that we shared today. And also, if you want to see all the other videos, you can find them right here on YouTube. Follow me on Twitter at eyes underscore on the skies for all of my updates and news. Instagram at strange paradigms for like pictures and reels and stuff. But if you want to continue this conversation, bring it over to the Discord server with 2,000. I never thought we would grow this big. 2,000 other like-minded members. Share your thoughts, your insights, your experiences, and more. I know one of my amazing mods will place that link in the live chat. I want to thank Everyone that donated to the gift card, all the Super Chat, Super Stickers, YouTube members, Patreon supporters, my amazing moderators, and everyone watching this live. I simply could not do this show without you. I will see all of you guys soon. Be safe. And remember, keep your eyes on the skies.